So today we're out here at the Free Flight Nats and I've got Bob Sifley, four time national free flight champion. And today we want to talk a little bit about, you know, you spend all this time figuring out when I'm going to send my, my airplane up, you get the airplane up in the air. And what I see a lot of guys out here doing, they, they jump on their, their, uh, their motorbikes, they jump on their four wheelers and they're tracking down their air, aircraft. I see a lot of guys using different ways to find their aircraft. Tell me a little bit about what goes into that whole process. Okay. Uh, of course, if the airplane goes a long ways uh, or you don't see it down or it lands in the cornfield or wherever, uh, why, um, it used to be, it was just good luck. You had to w watch where it come down, hope you could find it. <laughs> but uh, e eventually, uh, the people that build these animal tracking rigs, you know, like falconry people or people that's following the tiger or whatever. Why uh, we've adapted similar equipment to have a very small, small transmitter. Maybe the transmitter is about this big, has three or four batteries in it, and it uh, sends out pulses. You, you know, t yeah. you know, maybe one pulse every three or four seconds type of thing. And then you have a receiver with a direction finding antenna, and then you know you you, you turn on the receiver and. And if you can, you know, you look for the strongest signal and the strongest signal is the direction the airplane's in. You just keep following that till you right. get to the airplane. And the range of those is quite typically two or three miles, even more than that in the air. Maybe if you're in a, a real depression in the ground, well then the range is much limited. And, and that, uh, that's a very commonly used, used system. A lot of manufacturers that make that type of stuff that's adaptable to what we do. Very cool. A lot less lost airplanes nowadays. But, uh, uh, you know, GPS has come into the picture and they have GPS rigs now. They're a little heavier than the other ones that we use, but, uh, but you got a GPS transmitter. Of course, you've got to have a big, bigger battery to run those and you have a GPS receiver. And uh, then the transmitter and receiver talk to each other as well as the satellite. So, so these things are set up that it will, will ha have it as a screen and on the screen is an arrow and the arrow points in the direction of the airplane and it tells you how far away the airplane is. And this is, a, this is a significantly better than the other system because you know how far it is. You can, you can plan how you're gonna get to it. Whereas the, the, the ones that just sends out a pulse, why you don't know how far away it is. And it's, uh, it's a little harder to get to them sometimes. So the, the GPS is now the desirable equipment to use and hey, of course you mentioned that they're a little bit heavier i obviously you have to take that into consideration when you're trimming your aircraft and and during the whole build process i would assume that's right uh, just like the little electric models you see some flying today you're not going to put an ounce worth of stuff in there because uh, the airplanes only weigh about six seven ounces anyway you can't afford that much weight but the larger airplanes why there's no problem well bob thank you so much for taking some time to explain all of these really cool aspects to free flight. I hope everybody out there had a chance to uh, really digest that and, and maybe, you know, learn a little bit about free flight and want to come try it out sometime. So Bob, thank you so much for talking to us. Well, thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Nats Demystified. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss another episode. We'll see you guys next time.